So if you're exploring the option to have a product 3D printed, there's a number of things that you just don't really want to do. Because if you're going to produce hundreds of thousands or millions of this piece, you just don't want to have potential for errors or problems come up. And one of those main issues that can come up is the need for support. These things are really undesirable because at the very least, they're going to increase post-processing, having to go through a tumbling process in order to have those knocked off. Or in the worst case, they can radically increase the cost of a part because they require a human to come by and pull these off because for any individual part, it might not be automatable. So in order to maximize the efficiency of the 3D printing process, you really wanna minimize support and have as little of it as possible. And if you're able to design your part so that these things just are not necessary, that is the ideal situation because it'll makes a part much more reliable, much more affordable, and very often just makes it look a whole lot better because you no longer have the interface areas where a part of the part is falling onto support. So in this video, we're gonna go through some of the most basic solutions to get rid of all the nastiness that can come from having support material of a, like a traditional slicer. So supports are necessary. For example, on this piece, when you have this horizontal edge that sticks straight out into the air, this has to be supported. Otherwise, these edges, these bottoms of this part, when it's printed in the nozzles coming along here, would just drop and sag. So you can't have that. You have to have something underneath it to support it. Um, that is the most common issue. So this might be the, the fingers of a part or some edge, or in this case, like a structural right turn. But then there are also bridges, and bridges are when there is just a long gap from one vertical to another, the space between a pillar. And that has to be supported as well, because again, as a nozzle is laying down that first layer, it can partially sag. Now, supports are fine, and you can have these automatically generated inside of a slicer, but the issue with that is that you don't have an exceptional amount of control. And again, you have all of this waste material that could be embedded into the part. So instead of having material that is torn off and thrown away, you can have material that is part of the part making the part better. So one of the most simple examples that many people default to is to use fillets. And fillets are fine because you now take what is like a long bridging distance and you turn it into a dome so that it no longer has that sort of supported bridged area or you have it slowly raise up there so that you don't need as much support. But the problem with arcs and fillets is the fact that they do eventually become horizontal. That is the nature of a fillet. It is tangent to the place where it starts and to the place where it ends. So if you have a very long horizontal overhang, you still might need just a tiny bit of support right there that has to be pulled off. And that's not really great because you just lost the benefit of the thing. However, sometimes the design of it requires that you use arcs. Maybe there's a hole or a pin or something inside of there. Um, so it's an option, but it's not really an ideal option and it's not always the most optimal option. The most optimal option is to use chamfers. And chamfers are great because they actually eliminate the need for any other sort of support. Since they are a 45 degree angle and a consistent angle all the way up, you no longer have the sudden horizontal feature that can come up with like standard fillets. Fillets have an issue, chamfers do not. The other option is that you can actually go all the way to the tip so that there is no support needed anywhere. And chamfers on this channel we have said many times are really awesome because they just have no exterior need, other post-processing. This part could come off of there fully complete. And the thing that you wanna hit on, because now the machines can automatically eject parts, move on to the next one, and it can produce hundreds of thousands of this part and have it be more affordable and scalable than other processes that you might have it mass produced with. So when you can use chamfers, this is really the option that you want to use. Now, here's the thing though. Ultimately, within all of this stuff, the best option to use is no supports at all. So if you have a cavity or a bridge or an overhang, really the very best solution is to just fill it in. Go through and change your CAD model so that it is filled in with solid volume because rather than simply having these empty air gaps right here, we'll fill them in with material and with infill 
and they will basically have very close to the same amount of material anyway. So anytime you can just get rid of these overhangs or these indents or anything else and just fill it in as a solid block, that is the ultimate solution. Now, sometimes you have to have an area that is supported and that just happens. The geometry will require it. But again, you don't really always want to default to the manufacturer slicer because there is differences in settings. There are all kinds of variations in how things actually work. Um, so if you can control it inside of CAD within the parameters of a standard machine that has a 0.4 nozzle and a certain flow rate and that kind of thing, it's much easier to design supports inside of CAD. That way they can go right where they need to be. They are absolutely minimal and they're very easy to control and tweak as opposed to trying to find the magic recipe that your printer was using when you were making your prototypes. And that is a situation like this. In this situation, we use designed supports. And with designed supports, they're basically just a small block that is printed completely hollow that then comes up to a point wherever it needs to be supported. And this is a great solution for helping these types of parts because at the end of it all, not only is it well supported and a minimal amount of material, but it breaks off exceptionally easily. Now for this part, the center support here, you want to actually make them kind of a teardrop shape because since they are sort of interfacing with the lower part of the part, there's a lot of friction right there and giving it a rounded lower surface is ideal for that sort of situation. Just slightly rounded, not a ton, because again, it has to be built reliably and you don't want an unstable teetering piece of print there but it is very easy to make this sort of designed support so that you have a good, reliable part that has all the critical features that you need, but is not wasting big old blocks of material like this in order to support an area. Instead, it's using very minimal amounts of material like this to support an area. So hopefully that runs you through the very most basic ways of just getting uh, an overhang supported in a mass production part. Obviously the best solution is to just not have that overhang, but if you do need to use supports, please try to design them in CAD because you can make them much more reliable, much more consistent, and much easier for your contract manufacturer, like us, to actually get deployed without having to worry about any sort of translation issues between whatever machine you might have been prototyping on and the machines that we actually use inside of our large print farms. So reach out to us if you have any parts that do need mass produced and comment down below if there's other features of mass production 3D printing that you'd like us to talk about. Have a great day, everybody.